mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are pleased for this morning of the scripture readings read just a few moments ago, but specifically our gospel reading from John chapter 15 and 16, your friends in Christ. Apparently we're having a little technical difficulties with our microphones. Is this coming through? Is this one able to hear a little bit better? Good. Praise God for that. During this season of spring, it's not uncommon to have storms of different kinds, heavy rain, strong winds, maybe even tornadoes, and that's part of this season, isn't it? There's a change of seasons. Things are a bit unsettled. And I want you to think for a moment about a strong storm you've seen or the aftermath that you've witnessed. The strong wind, maybe it was a tornado, straight line winds. Maybe out here it was a consuming wildfire. We can picture those, can't we? I can remember a time I grew up in southern Indiana and it was not uncommon during the season of spring to have two or three tornado warnings, the sirens going off two or three times a week. And I remember one time, it was my sophomore year of high school, and the tornado sirens were going. I was at the, the high school gym. We were doing workouts for basketball and the like, and uh, the storm was coming, and it was a big one. It was a tornado that took out three houses and removed the roofs of two other houses, and that was just two blocks from my house in our neighborhood. And those kind of storms stick out in our minds, don't they? Those strong winds the consuming fire, the destruction that is left in the aftermath. And it's easy for us to remember those things, to recall those storms because they leave a mark in our mind. They hit us emotionally as we see the destruction. We stand in awe at the magnitude of the storm and the wind that seems unstoppable and so powerful that nothing in its way can move it, prevent it, stop it, or hinder its path. I want us to keep that image of, of a strong storm in our minds for a moment as we think about our scripture readings, as we think about today, the day of Pentecost, when God sends his Holy Spirit upon his disciples. And notice the imagery that is used to talk about the Holy Spirit, the wind, the tongues of fire. The Holy Spirit isn't talked like a, about like a gentle dove that descends on Jesus, like, like that dove we have in the center of our, our stained glass window that descended on Jesus at his baptism. No, the Holy Spirit is talked about as a rushing wind. And tongues of fire on the heads of the disciples. We see that in Acts chapter 2, verse 2. As the disciples are together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues of, of fire appeared on them and rested on each of them. I bet those... Disciples remember that day for the rest of their lives. The mighty rushing wind that filled the house where the Holy Spirit entered their lives and they were able to speak in languages that they had never spoken before to all kinds of people there in Jerusalem. You know, the Greek word for spirit is panoima. It means wind or breath and spirit. We see a mighty rushing wind not only here in Acts chapter 2, but also Ezekiel chapter 37, our Old Testament reading, where God brings Ezekiel into that valley, and there are dry bones, lots of them, and they are very dry. And God's word to Ezekiel is prophesied, son of man, speak to these bones that they may live, and Ezekiel prophesies. And the bones begin to rattle, and then muscle and sinew and flesh join those bones, and then they stand, and, and yet there's no life, and then there's no breath. And what does God say? Prophesy, son of man. 
call to the four winds that they may breathe life into these that have slain. And Ezekiel prophesies. And that wind, that spirit, that breath of life fills those who are slain and it brings life. That's the power of the Spirit. The power of that rushing wind that fills God's people with life. And that's what Jesus is referring to in our Gospel reading. In John chapter 15 and 16, Jesus is teaching His disciples. Jesus is teaching them on Monday, Thursday. There in the upper room where He gives and institutes Holy Communion. He takes the bread, he breaks it, he takes the cup, he blesses it. He said, this is my body, this is my blood. And Jesus gives this teaching in John 15 and 16 after he's washed the disciples' feet. He teaches them what's going to take place in the next couple of days, the next couple of hours, that he's going to be betrayed, that Peter will deny him, that are we put to death, and, and Jesus says, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter will come, and I will send him to you. And we see that taking place in that rushing wind of Acts chapter 2. How quickly we can recall the power of the wind when we see storms and the destruction, and I bet these disciples could always remember that day of Pentecost and the power of the wind that filled them and how the Holy Spirit entered their life, that they may be a witness for Jesus. That's why the Spirit comes, is it not? Jesus says it this way in verse 26 and 27. But when the Helper comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will, will bear wit be, and you also will bear witness. When that spirit comes, he'll bear witness of Jesus. And the spirit will fill your life, Jesus says to his disciples, that you may be my witnesses as well. And those disciples witnessed and experienced that day of Pentecost with the rushing wind. So how about you? These disciples remember the day of Pentecost and the rushing wind where the Holy Spirit filled them. Do you remember when the Holy Spirit filled you? Do you remember what happened to you on the day of your baptism? Isn't it kind of funny? We can talk about the weather and we can talk about storms and we can very quickly recall the destruction and the power of the wind and the storm and the destruction that has taken place and those memories come back quickly but talk about baptism how quickly do you remember those things and the day of our baptism maybe when you are baptized when you are brought to the baptismal font you're just a little infant and you don't remember that day specifically. Maybe you're an adult. Remember what happened at your baptism? It wasn't like the day of Pentecost for the disciples where the mighty rushing wind came and filled the house where tongues of fire were on their head and they spoke in different languages. No, at baptism, the pastor takes water. And poured it on your head. Pours it on the head of the child. The adult. And maybe we don't always remember our baptism as quickly as remember storms because this, this pouring of water doesn't look very powerful. This pouring on of water doesn't seem to be very significant or life-changing. And to witness such a thing doesn't always seem to be or remain etched in our minds, in our memory. And yet what takes place here is more powerful than any rushing wind of any storm or tornado. 
not because of the water, but because of the word. Not just any word, God's word, God's name, spoken by the pastor. Words spoken with breath, and through that breath, through that spirit, the water is given power. In the word that the pastor says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And what a storm takes place in your life. What destruction takes place in your life? For through the power of this water and the power of God's word in, with, and under the water, destruction of sin in your heart, in your life, is utterly destroyed. Our sinful nature our sinful desires, our sinfulness that we are born with that, that leads to death for all people is buried and destroyed here. Through the power of the word, through the power of that ponoima, that breath, that wind, that spirit that enters your life and drowns that sinful nature in the death of Jesus. Isn't that what Jesus talks about in our gospel reading? Jesus says that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of three things. He says it this way in verse 8. And when he comes, when the Spirit comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me no longer. Concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Have you ever seen the aftermath of a storm? I think Billings had a tornado go through. The last one, I might be wrong on this, but the last big one was, was in 2010, right? It was before we came here to Billings as a family, and it, and it hit Metro, Metro Park, I believe. And actually, I saw pictures of that on the internet. And the picture was, was an aerial view of the roof being torn off of Metro Park, and there was just debris scattered everywhere. And we see that in the aftermath of a storm, the destruction that takes place and the strength of that wind. Isn't that what sin does to our lives? It seems to destroy us leave our life in disarray, that's what the Holy Spirit comes to convict. The Holy Spirit will convict the world. The Holy Spirit enters our life and destroys all of the sin in our life and brings conviction for sin when people don't believe in Jesus and the Holy Spirit through the power of that word that is spoken. Like the strong wind that destroys is the one that destroys unbelief. The Holy Spirit convicts concerning righteousness. Now that sounds kind of, kind of funny, but when you think of righteousness, and you think what Jesus is talking about here, he's saying, after I ascend into heaven, he's going to be with God in heaven, no longer being seen by people or his disciples, and the Holy Spirit will convict for righteousness. Because people will begin to think that they are good and worthy. And there's no one among us who is good and worthy and perfect like Jesus. We cannot compare ourselves to Him. We don't see Him. And so the Spirit convicts when people think that they're good and worthy or righteous. Finally, the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, will convict concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. The prince of this world, Satan himself and all those evil forces tempt us and surround us. And the Holy Spirit says that that evil ruler, that prince of darkness, Satan himself is judged by the cross of Jesus. And it's there on the cross of Jesus that it seems like the force of this sinful world has won. 
as a crucified our Savior. He's left dead, hanging on the cross, and they bury him in a tomb. And it seems like this evil force of sin, the evil ruler of this sinful world has won. Jesus dead and buried. And yet three days later, the Holy Spirit, God himself, raises Jesus from the dead to bring life to bring forgiveness, to clean up all the sin and destruction in our life. We know what that looks like after a storm. The debris that is scattered, the cleanup that needs to take place. And that Holy Spirit that destroys the sin in our life is also the one who cleans up the mess forgives us for our wrongs, for our sin, and builds us as a new person in Christ. That's the promise of baptism. When God's Word, His Holy Spirit, fills your life, your heart, not only does it destroy the darkness of sin, but God builds you up, creates you, redeems you, makes you holy in Christ that you may be a new creature, a new person in Jesus, built up in faith and life in Him. Isn't that what happened with the disciples? On that day of Pentecost, when the rushing wind came, the Holy Spirit filled them, and they proclaimed God's Word. They were strengthened in their faith, and so with you. Through the waters of baptism, through the Holy Spirit filling your heart, your life with faith. That's a day to remember. The church remembers this day of Pentecost when God sends His Holy Spirit to fill the lives of His disciples. And as we remember this day of Pentecost, we remember our baptism. We remember the day that the Holy Spirit entered into our life, creating faith in us, Burying that sinful nature in the death and resurrection of Jesus that we may be built up as a new person in Christ, redeemed, holy, forgiven. And it's that Holy Spirit that's at work in your life. Feeding and strengthening your faith through God's Word. Through the sacrament of Holy Communion. So that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may be led in the way of Jesus. You see, that's what Jesus also talks about the Holy Spirit in the Gospel reading. Jesus says it this way in chapter 16, verse 13. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. The Holy Spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all the truth. It is the Holy Spirit that leads you, that guides you to follow Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And so on this day of Pentecost, we remember the work of the Holy Spirit that God gave to His disciples. We remember our baptism as God sent that Holy Spirit into our life to give us faith. And we remember what we are called to do as God's children. Like the Holy Spirit who bears witness to Jesus, so also we go to be witnesses of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit, as we show people Jesus with the work of our hands, as we share Jesus with people who are in need of His love and forgiveness, as we speak words of Scripture with our breath, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to use those words of hope and healing to work in people's life like a mighty rushing wind. In Jesus' name, amen.